Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? We are less than three weeks away from the NFL draft. As a matter of fact, round one is two weeks from Thursday. And you're going to start to hear more and more names uh, among the top 30 visits. If you're not familiar, every team can host 30 players. Uh, you fly them in almost like an official visit. You can fly them in before the draft, work them out, all that sort of stuff, take them to dinner, all that sort of stuff. You, but you're limited to 30 with which you can do that. Uh, it's often referred to as, the, as your top 30. It doesn't mean it's necessarily like the top 30 players on your board because, I mean, there may be players that you get enough info at, at the Senior Bowl or the Combine or a Pro Day. So maybe this is an opportunity to take a closer look. Or if you didn't have a chance for your position coach to work out a player, you want to bring him in, just get to know him better. There's just a lot of different reasons, but you can do that with 30 prospects. And uh, U Stadium, I don't know what U Stadium is. It's a, they got, they got a blue check mark, but I guess everybody can now. Um, they report that Western Kentucky wide receiver Malachi Corley uh, has already had top 30 visits with the Steelers, Cowboys, Browns, Ravens. And coming up in the next 10 days, he's going to visit the Panthers, Bucks, Saints, Seahawks, Niners, and has now recently added the Jets as well. And apparently he has a Zoom meeting with the Bengals and already met with the Colts OC. So this is a really interesting prospect. Um... It mostly because so he's a he's a wide receiver out of Western Kentucky, and he's interesting because he doesn't necessarily have prototypical size, a five ten, two fifteen, and his relative athletic score, which <laughs> we know the New Orleans Saints, boy, do they love them a relative athletic score. That's how you end up taking guys like Peyton Turner in round one. Um, but his relative athletic score of seven seven six isn't great. So but look at all of the the visits that he's taking. Now, he was a very productive receiver out of the slot at Western Kentucky. So that's where he would project to the next level. And so when you think about like who are the best slot receivers in the NFL? Well, Justin Jefferson is the best slot receiver in the NFL. Malachi Corley isn't a carbon copy of Jefferson or Chris Godwin or Jarvis Landry or Adam Thielen or CeeDee Lamb or Tyree Kill. I mean, you're talking about some of the top receivers in the NFL who play out of the slot. But even if you look at the Saints, who need a, a slot receiver, I think this is a pretty obvious need. I mean, look, Chris Olave is dynamic on the outside. Rashid Shahid is a game-breaker. The guy who you played most in the slot last year was Michael Thomas. Well, he's gone. So when you look at the Saints receivers from a year ago, your number one was Alave, your number two was Shahid, your third most productive receiver was Michael Thomas, who's gone. After that, just for just for context, after those three, I'm not talking about pass catchers, I'm not talking about Kamara or your tight ends I'm or Taysom Hill, I'm talking about wide receivers. Alave, Shahid, Michael Thomas, after that, A.T. Perry, who had 12 catches, Lynn Bowden, who had 11. Keith Kirkwood, who had 5. So, yes, you went in free agency and you signed Cedric Wilson to a two-year deal and you signed Stanley Morgan to a one-year deal. And Morgan, I think, is a uh, certainly a bubble prospect to make the roster. It's probably just another veteran guy in a, in a pretty young group. Because you signed Cedric Wilson to a two-year deal, although his cap hits only about a million and a half dollars, so you could eat that if he doesn't make the team, like his dead number is a million and a half. You could eat that if he doesn't make the team. It's likely he's going to be one of your receivers if you're going to keep five or six. So like you know Olave and Shahid are going to make the team, very likely Cedric Wilson. I, I would think A.T. Perry is going to have a spot, but you still have at least one, if not two more spots up for grabs. So everyone that's looking, saying the Saints are going to draft a receiver, it stands to reason, and you're most likely going to draft a slot receiver, which is why a guy like Malachi Corley could make sense. So the real question becomes then, okay, where? Like, what's it going to cost you in the draft to get Malachi Corley? So, again, just for context, um, Mel Kuyper, in his most recent big board, 
where he ranked the top 25 prospects and the top 10 at each position. He has Malachi Corley as the 10th best wide receiver in this year's draft. For for correlation, last year, the 10th receiver taken was Jalen Hyatt in round three. He went 73rd overall. Uh, Field Yates, who did, recently did a two-round mock over at ESPN.com, did not have Malachi Corley in his two-round mock. Now, the highest I've seen Corley mocked, Matt Miller did a seven-round mock at ESPN, and he had Malachi Corley 51 overall to, to Pittsburgh. So that's you know, middle of round two. Mid, middle, late, you know, round two. So you're talking, he, he'll, he'll be a day two pick, but remember, the Saints don't have a three. They have a one, a two, and then they have four fifth-round picks, but they don't have a three or a four. So either you're looking at Malachi Corley at 45 overall, or you're hoping to trade back to get assets, or you're moving up with future picks if you're if you're looking at a guy like Malachi Corley. It may be a thing where if you're sitting there in round two, let's let's say hypothetically, you go offensive line at 14, which I'm hoping they do. You all know that. Best available at 45 isn't a receiver. Just play the hypothetical with me. Let's say best available isn't a receiver. Well, let's say Malachi Corley falls into round three, and you fee- and you had a second round grade on him, and you need a receiver. Maybe you package a fifth round pick and like next year's three or something like that to go up to get him. You know, m- maybe that maybe that's too steep. I don't know. But let's say you move, you find a way to get up in round three to take him. That seems like where that might be the most realistic you know, possibility. I don't know if Malachi Corley is going to be the guy, but. One of the things that I say all the time is actions speak louder than words. Yes, it is possible that you're bringing him to New Orleans for a top 30 visit as a smokescreen. You're trying to t- to show other people, other teams, hey, we have interest in this guy. So if you want him, snag him before the Saints make a move. That feels like a very expensive smokescreen. <laughs> you're going to fly, fly someone in, not just the cost of Airline tickets, hotels, food, all that sort of stuff. But also, just the resources you would have to invest in your coaches and staff members working out a player and spending time with this player instead of getting ready for the draft and other things they may have to do. I don't know if that's my favorite choice. I can't tell you I know a ton, right? I, I can I can go look at game film like anybody can. I think the question is, do you trust the evaluation of of this staff looking at at receivers. And that's been a spot where they've hit. I mean, A.T. Perry last year in round six felt like a steal. Michael Thomas was great. They clearly hit on Chris Olave. Yeah, I mean, I, I look and I go, while they have certainly struggled in certain spots in the draft, I mean, as of now, you have, you know, you've whiffed on Trevor Penning. Uh, Cesar Ruiz has become a starter, but not a very good one. Are you going to get anything out of Nick Saldaveri? Don't know. I mean, you're starting to call into question their ability to evaluate offensive linemen, which is scary because that's probably where you need to go in round one this year. But receiver's been a spot where they've hit. So if they bring in Malachi Corley, they love him, and they go there in round two and you need a slot receiver, it's an interesting one to watch. This is a guy who's on a lot of people's boards. He's taken a lot of visits, and he's an intriguing prospect, probably because he's small. He's a he's an undersized guy who doesn't have the great athleticism that would pop in like a three cone drill or a forty yard dash. Uh, he ran a four four nine in the forty, so he you know, he doesn't have the blazing four three speed. He doesn't have the prototypical size. He he was a productive player, but at a smaller school. So it makes sense that a lot of teams would want to get a closer look, and the Saints are one of them. So Western Kentucky wide receiver Malachi Corley come to New Orleans for one of their uh, pre, uh, thirty uh, top 30 pre-draft visits. Saints need a receiver. It's undeniable that's going to be a spot they address in this year's draft. Almost like we knew going into last year's draft, they, they had to address running back. You had an aging Alvin Kamara. Yes, you signed Jamal Williams, but you felt like you had to get younger at that spot, and they did. They took Kendra Miller. The Saints are going to take a receiver somewhere in this year's draft. It's just where, and is it a slot receiver like a guy like Malachi Corley? We'll see. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.